Hi, it's Joe. Today we're going to be building the F6F5 Hellcat. These planes were nicknamed the aluminum tank by the pilots because of the severe damage they could take and still bring them home. At one point, Grumman was producing one of these airplanes per hour, a production feat that has never been matched since. This kit is pretty straightforward. There's only four sprues and one of them has clear parts. There is a decal sheet, which I have had issues with Academy decal sheets in the past, but we'll see how this one goes. We're going to be going with the dark sea blue gloss color. Directions are also straightforward, nothing too complicated. And you have some options here for the armament. You can put drop tanks, bombs, rockets. I think we're going to load this one up fully. And here's the two color schemes. You can also do the tri colored version if you'd like. So let's get started with this. Not the most detailed kit I've seen, but you do have recessed panel lines, and it's not too bad. I think we can make something good out of this. And to start off, we're just going to cut off the pieces for the cockpit assembly. Also make sure to clean the pieces off with a sharpened hobby knife. And with some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and tweezers, we start the assembly of the cockpit here. Priming the pieces here with black primer. This will allow a bit of a shadow to come through once you put the other color on top of it. And you can also knock out a couple more pieces here if you look ahead on the directions. That way you're not going back and forth as much. Using XF4 yellow green, which does a great impression of the interior chromate green color that was used during this time period. And I use black here just to bring out some of the details that are going to be on the interior. Scrape the paint to help the two pieces bond together easier. I am using Mark Fit Strong before I place the decal and also over the top of the decal once it's in place. This will help it really clamp down to the surface. And 
now I'm going to use flat aluminum to dry brush the details within the cockpit. Attempting to emulate chipping within the interior here as well. belts out of cut strips of Tamiya tape and I'm just adding some flat aluminum here to make some highlights from the belts. And we'll just add to the interior detail by putting a dark wash on there. Gluing the cockpit together, sometimes I'll have it dry inside of the groove so that when I get to this part I know it will fit correctly. You just have to be careful that it doesn't get glued inside of there. I have to admit that this one fit together better than I thought it would. I prefer going section by section and then using tape to hold the two halves together until I go all the way around the aircraft. I really try to take my time during this part and make sure these are even with one another. It's very easy to have them not be even. Sometimes the fit isn't always perfect and the last thing you want to do is finish your model, look at it and realize that they are not. And after allowing the glue to dry, it's time to take the tape off. I think this is a very exciting time in the build because putting the wings together, it allows the plane to take its final shape and really starts to define itself. It's also a time where you realize that maybe things don't fit the way that they should. This one wasn't too bad though.
gunmetal over the black primer, as well as gray in the appropriate areas. Now give it a wash after using a clear coat. Seems to be a good time to use regular cement. You might notice on the left side of the cowling there, I glued a piece on that wasn't supposed to be on this version. So I had to take it off and sand it and do some other things. So always try to pay attention as much as possible. So the plane ultimately did go together, it went together fairly well. There are a few gaps that need to be taken care of, as you can see around the wing roots there, and I will be using Milliput to take care of those. I've become a pretty big advocate for this stuff. I love that you have such a long working time that you can sculpt it with water. And I just, I really like it. It works very well. If you have a really small gap, you can use regular putty, but this stuff works great for this type of snare. Seamless, as they say. This is an attempt to deepen the panels before sanding. I find that if I do this beforehand, they are easy to rescribe afterwards. Mr. Surfacer over the seam line to hopefully get rid of that later on. 
समाचार Two or a 300 grit. And I also use water to try and not have scuff marks when I do this. Seems to help. I use cheap nail files with multiple sides to buff and sand and that type of thing. They're really useful. And here I'm rescribing the panel lines back. My drill bit was not cooperating with me, so I'm just using a hobby knife to drill holes into the guns. Seemed to work out pretty good. And then I use Tamiya Extra Thin to clean up afterwards. This will get rid of the burrs and shavings afterwards. I'm getting pretty close to installing the canopy at this point, so just painting everything and getting it ready to go. Canopy pieces were too thick to put under a light and effectively cut shapes around tape. So I cut thin strips out here and used liquid mask in the middle. The nice thing about this sea gloss blue color that I'm going to be painting the aircraft is that everything is this color. You don't have to worry about masking the wheel wells, you don't have to paint the landing gear or anything different, you just put everything on and you spray it all blue. So it is a nice change of pace. fuel tank can be improved a little bit with Mr. Surfacer. There are a few gaps. This part was great fun with tweezers and toothpicks and glue. You could probably put this on easier if you did it before putting the landing gear on. I'm using
using a clear parts glue for this so that I don't fog the canopy up. The fit was not bad. I did have to use a little bit of filler on the front and on the side between the two pieces. Using rubbing alcohol to clean off before painting with a makeup remover. I wonder what the good people at the dollar store think of me coming in there all the time buying makeup removers and nail files and, well, whatever, neither here nor there. So I'm priming everything in the black because I will be spraying this with AS12 bare metal silver. F17 C blue. actually chip some of the top paint off and show the silver. So that's what I'm doing here. And always protect your work with a gloss coat. I'm using Pledge Floor Cleaner. assemble and clean up the ordnance. After sanding I used Tamiya Extra Thin to clean up the scratches and make the surface smooth again. Ready to paint these remaining pieces. I'm going to use the black primer again as well as the silver. The bombs and rocket tips will be painted in olive drab color and the wheels and the fuel tank will be painted the sea blue. to add the chipping so that it matches the rest of the airplane. I was a little nervous doing these decals because the last Academy kit and Avenger that I built decals were very thick and they fell apart so I am happy to report that these did not do that and I used micro set ahead of them to help move them around just in case but all in all they, they worked out great. I am also using an old airbrush needle if you're wondering to help move the decals around and they're especially useful on the stencils. Microsol now to help get that to conform to the panel lines and here's a time-lapse video for your enjoyment. If you roll
roll your hobby knife over the panel lines, you can also make those panel lines a lot deeper and then just apply some more microsol over the top. And I'm just giving a quick wipe down with some distilled water just to get that decal solution off there before I put my protective clear coat over it. And now on to using the Tamiya panel line accent color black for all of the panels. I'm not sure how much of this you see over the blue, but it does look nice over the decals. doing some last minute painting here before I do the last gloss coat so might as well just get it all in now I'm using gunmetal for the gun turrets and silver for the lights and using an enamel thinner and a dampened cotton bud I can clean off the wash black for the tires and crazy glue works good for these bomb fixtures Now just putting the drop tank under there and I do say it looks pretty cool with all of that stuff underneath. I find that taking these masks off is also a very exciting time. Be very careful here not to scratch the canopy glass underneath. You just want to take this very slow. In the pictures I saw, the stains and exhaust all appear to be white, so I'm actually using a snow color here to try and simulate that effect.
gonna try and add some wear and tear and a little bit of chipping to the propeller blades here. I'm gonna first start off with a dry brush and then also a chipping effect afterwards. The rigging I did with stretch sprue as well as an incense stick to tighten it up afterwards and I'm just painting a rubber black color over the top. This was not in the instruction so I guess you could consider this scratch. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please like or subscribe if you would like to. Thanks.